In case you weren't already aware, the distribution of words in English isn't anywhere near equal, and it's not even a normal distribution. If the words were ranked in order of frequency, each word's frequency would be proportional to its rank. That is, the nth most frequent word appears one nth as frequently as the most frequent word. This is what's referred to as Ziff's Law. Ziff's Law applies in many other domains, but this video will focus on language. As far as we know, Ziff's Law applies not only to English, but to Spanish, Korean, and every other language. The whistles of dolphins, and even the electrical signals that some fun guy used to communicate, also follow this law. And this distribution isn't just for words. It applies to other features of language, like characters. Whether looking at the 26 letters of English, or the thousands of kanji in Japanese, the distribution looks similar. Why Ziff's law holds for language isn't exactly clear. The linguist George Kingsley Ziff, after whom this law is named, claimed that it is the result of pressures for efficient communication. According to Ziff, there are competing pressures for the speaker and the listener to use as little effort as possible. For the speaker, the least amount of effort would be to use one word to mean everything. But this would be extremely difficult for a listener to understand. The listener introduces a pressure to disambiguate, or to use one word for each meaning. In this model, every language approaches an optimum where a few words are used many times and many are used relatively infrequently. And if we look at the 100 most common words in English, there is a high average number of word meanings. But psychologist George Miller proved that monkeys hitting a typewriter at random would also produce words in this distribution. So we shouldn't be surprised that every natural language we know of follows this law, or that ChatGPT produces text that follows this law when prompted to create an artificial language. There's just no consensus among linguists on what causes this law. We do, however, know some of the effects. One of them is that it causes uneven resistance to change. In modern English, most verbs are regular, meaning that the past tense can be formed by only adding d, as opposed to changing the root, as was the norm in Old English until nearly a thousand years ago. The irregular verbs that remained irregular generally have higher frequencies than the irregular verbs that became regular. Besides irregularization, the more common words were also less likely to be replaced outright. After the Normans conquered the English in 1066, as much as 80% of Old English words were replaced with French ones. However, if we look back to those 100 most common modern English words, almost all of them are from Old English, which makes sense. In the field of natural language processing, we can use Ziff's law to inform us of methods to improve processes. For example, we know that because the most common words are so common, they don't provide much discriminative value meaning that we are more likely to be able to ignore them to improve the performance of our algorithms and models. It's then no coincidence that many of the most common words are stop words, which are usually deleted during pre-processing. It's the less common words that are more likely to contribute to the meaning of a sentence, depending on the task. If you found this video useful, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.